Hi guys, good evening. I am Elon Rohan, Professor of Zoology. On the basic principles of genetics. Now let's pass on to the next part of genetics. So what we have with the reference to linkage and then crossing over etc. Some of the basic principles. And the Mendel was successful because the genes controlling different characters are located in different chromosomes. And they normally did assort independently. So that we have received different combinations of series. And we received the ratio that I have cross 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. But he did not know the basic principles, two basic principles, namely linkage and crossing over. See so the new recombinations, the non parallel combinations are produced as per the Mendel's principles when the genes are located on different chromosomes. So it's possible we will get different actually the parent or non parallel combinations according to Mendel when the genes for different characters are located on different chromosomes. But here a new concept has been made. So we have received non parallel combinations or recombinations because of one phenomenon what is called crossing over. That according to Mendel, the recombinations, the non parallel combinations are produced because the genes are located in different chromosomes. So, and also another phenomenon he did not know, he did not explain what is called the linkage. So, the linkage and crossing over, these are the two aspects he did not explain. Now, let's say something about the linkage phenomenon in the case of animals as Mendel did not explain. Now, this concept was first proposed by T.H. Morgan while just climbed about this phenomenon in Drosophila melanogaster and also in plants. The linkage phenomenon was studied in uh, sweet pea by Battison and Battison just actually experimentally proved the concept of linkage in the case of sweet pea, Lathyrus or Rhytus. Now, what do you mean by linkage? So normally we have the genes localized, set of genes localized on the chromosomes. Some of the genes, for example, if you take the genes A, B and C, these are all the three genes. And these genes are called non-allelic genes. So this is actually allelic, B and B and C. So these are all non-allelic pairs of genes. So I have taken three genes localized on the homologous pairs of chromosomes. Let us assume these genes are present in chromosome number 1, same example of intracellular. So, when these genes are present in the same chromosome, and that is a concept away from the Mendelian principle, and these genes controlling the characters tend to be inherited together. So, this concept is called linkage. So, we have non allelic pairs of genes. So, A and B are non allelic, then A and A are allelic or capital A, small a allele. But A, B, C, these are all non-allelic paths of genes located on the chromosomes. And when these genes are localized are located on the same chromosome, they have the tendency to be inherited together. This concept is called what is known as linkage. So the tendency of genes or the characters to be inherited together when they are present on the same chromosome, that concept is called linkage. Now, actually, I mentioned earlier, the linked genes have their losses. Suppose I am taking a pair of homologous chromosomes. The gene A may be found in the fifth locus. Gene B may be present in the seventh locus. And gene C may be present in, say, an example of tenth locus. So, the linked genes have a loci along the same chromosome, same 5th, 7th and 10th, as an example I said. So, these genes when presented together on the same chromosome, they did not assort independently. Even in some cases, you have assortment is there, but not up to the 100% level. So, when the genes are located on the same chromosome, they did not assort independently, as proposed by Mendel. So, the law of independent assortment is not universal. It is possible only when the genes for controlling different characters are located in different chromosomes. But when the genes are located on the same chromosome with their own locus or with their own low sign, they are normally not showing any kind of independent assortment. That's why given here, 
Lady James had a lawsuit along the same roads, and these James did not assert independently during the formation of camps. Then, actually, these non allelic genes tend to be inherited together, so A, B, and C are non allelic genes. So, A and A are alleles, B and B are alleles, C and C are alleles, we can say similar alleles, but A, B, C all together they are not allelic, not allelic pairs, they are not allelic pairs. They are located on the, the chromosome and their original definite looks. So, it's these non allelic genes that tend to be inherited together or called as the linked genes. Those genes present on the same chromosome inherited together are said to be linked genes. Now, this concept, as I said earlier, was proposed by T.H. Morton. He was the first one to discover the linked genes in Drosophila melanogaster. He was the first one to actually study the sex linked genes in the case of sex chromosomes of Drosophila melanogaster with a reference to certain characters. For example, we are taking the eye color of Drosophila or the body color of Drosophila, the size of the wing of Drosophila. So, these are all some of the characters considered as linked characters or these characters are controlled by the genes and these genes are located on the chromosome and they are considered as a linked genes. We will see one by one. Now, Mendel did, did one experiment. So, normally in a diabetic cross, you know that one. We have received the F2 generation in the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, the 9, the 1 ratio, they together form the parental combinations because they are exactly similar to the parental varieties what we take it for the cross. And these two, 3 is to 3, the 6. So these 3 is to 3 are totally the 6, the total ratio 6. And they represent the non-parental combinations. They are different from the parents. For example, your cross is affected from this baby in round yellow and wrinkled green. We have received round yellow and wrinkled in green. These are the parental combinations. Then the round green and wrinkled yellow, these two varieties are non-parental combinations. So he did experiment in the case of Drosophila in the following manner. So he crossed, just he take a female and a male individual. So the gene for yellow body. And white one is taken two characters, yellow body that is with white eye color. He cross this one with the brown body, dress of with brown body color, and then red eye. Red eye. So the normal characters are considered as a wild character, the wild type, the normal type. So here the brown body color is dominant over that is yellow body color. The red eye is dominant over white eye. He draws this one. He obtained in the F1. The F1. Normally the G for body color, white eye, are located on the X chromosome. So, these are all the sex linked genes. These are all the sex linked genes or X linked genes. Normally, the X linked genes are the recessive genes while they are transmitted. They follow a crisscross pattern of inheritance. Suppose, for example, the male has brown body and red eye. Now, in the F1 generation, normally the male which is reserved has yellow body, yellow body plus white eye, yellow body plus white eye, that is, this is a one. And whereas the females, they have, for example, brown body, brown body color and red eye, red eye. Now this is a female. So normally here the characters are being transmitted in a zigzag manner as per the x character characters concerned. Now we have a C. See that one, the females are brown with a red eye, the males are yellow, 
just actually with white eye. So this is a genotype. Now here, if we are taking this one, it is heterozygous. Capital B, small b, capital O, small r. This is a F1 generation. So we are seeing the female normally as far as the excellent character is concerned. The females or the females or carries for that character. For example, in the case of color blindness, you are going to study later. So now the females or carries because they carry the genes for that character. So normally the females are heterozygous or homozygous. Now these are all the actually homozygous female and this is heterozygous female. As per the male is concerned, normally in the case of white chromosome, we have just no genes for that one. And they have just only one gene. The white chromosome has no allele. Similarly here also. So this is female. So this is female, no change. And in the case of male only, just we have so no opposite allele being present in the Y chromosome. For example, if you have the X and Y, this is a Y chromosome. If the X chromosome has gene B, there is no corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. Similarly, for this one, we have capital R, no corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. So, in the case of this male, so I represented here, X and Y, here, no corresponding allele, then R, no corresponding allele. So, we have here, okay now, so, a cross was affected between yellow body white and female, yellow body white and female, the recessive character with a brown body red eye male. So we have normally the males are hemizygous as a represented here because they have only one gene for the character, there is no corresponding allele in the Y chromosome. So I represent only one capital here, one hyphen, one capital one, one hyphen, as there is no allele. And similarly, in this case, they represent small y hyphen, small r hyphen, that indicated that actually there is no corresponding allele in the y chromosome. So now we least bother. We least bother about actually the genes whether they are localized in the x chromosome or not. So I am taking just generally that I have to cross. So whether it is female or male, now we have as per that I have to cross. We are crossing yellow body white eye and brown body red eye. Now here this is F1, this is heterozygous. When this F1 is normally just a cross with a recessive. So yellow, then we have white eye. Yellow, white eye. Yellow, body, white eye. It's being crossed with that is brown, red. So in this case, normally the yellow body color is recessive. And white eye is also recessive to red. Now we are getting the F form. Now the females normally we have brown red. Brown red. I am taking this female. Brown red. And then just we have it is a heterozygous individual. Heterozygous individual. Heterozygous individual, so brown red. And now this is the male, if you are taking the male, this straight is normally to begin with brown red. Now this is yellow, yellow and white, yellow body color and white eye color, yellow body color and white eye color. So, so yellow body recessive eye color. I am taking two genes though. Normally the males are hemizygous as per the excellent character is concerned for namesake. I am taking in this manner. So we are getting this F1 female brown red and then just actually yellow and white eye that is a male. Now this is when a hybrid parrot or a heterozygous parrot is crossed with a recessive parrot. You know that one will get. 
the ratio. The phenotypic ratio normally 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. We are getting the ratio. So, we are getting the ratio 1. This is a normal test cross ratio. We have acted. So, when cross is affected between these two varieties, we have received four types of individuals as in the case of dihybrid cross where we have received 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, now in this case, the least order, whether it is a test cross or just actually a hybrid cross. Now, what are the results we have to So, when cross is affected between F1, that is brown red, and the yellow white eye, that is a male, now we are obtaining the results in the following manner. Two parallel varieties and two non-parallel varieties. So now what are the parallel varieties we received? So these are all the parallel varieties. You know that one red, the brown red. This is one variety, brown red, the dominant. And then we have just the opposite one that is yellow, white. So, body with brown color and red eye, a body with yellow color and white. And these are all called the parallel varieties. Parallel. These are called the parallel. Parallel. The non parallel varieties, what we receive in addition to these two, that is brown, white, then yellow, red. So these two are called the non-parallel varieties or the recombinant varieties, non-parallel or recombinant varieties. So as in the case of dietary cross, we receive four types of individuals, brown red, then brown white, yellow red, yellow white. So these two are the parallel combinations. So Morgan observed in this class, actually, the non-parallel combinations cost only 1.3%. The non-parallel combinations. The non-parallel combinations. Only 1.3%. The meaning for that one. The parallel combinations cost nearly about 98.7%. 98.7%. That indicated that the genes, normally namely the body color genes and the eye color genes are present on the same chromosome and they are all integrated together so that we have increased number of parallel combinations and the recombinant varieties only 1.3% namely brown white and yellow red. And from these results he proposed that another experiment also he did. So here, the genes for, that is yellow body, the genes for, say an example of white eye color, are tightly linked. The gene for yellow body color and the gene for white eye, that is white eye color, they are formed in the same chromosome, for example, like this. So this is gene for yellow and this is for white. And these two genes are tightly linked. Again, these two genes are placed together nearby. So normally, the chances of crossing over is more when the genes are placed further away. And the genes, when they are presented together nearby, the strength of linkage is more and the percentage of recombination is less. So if you are getting the result of non-parental varieties least in percentage, that showed that the genes for eye color, the genes for body color are tightly linked. They are presented together nearby. That is why the chance of crossing over is less. This is one experiment. So we have more number of parallel combinations and less number of non-parallel combinations. The frequency is less. That is why from that one he assumed that these two genes, the genes for eye color, namely the white, the genes for body color, say an example of yellow, and these two are linked together tightly. Such, such linked genes, such closely linked genes or tightly linked genes show least percentage of recombination. This is one. So another cross is also effective with reference to, for example, mini HLB. Mini HLB regarding the big size in Russell, mini HLB. 
So there are two types of wing. One is the wing is very small, the miniature wing. Another one a long wing. Long wing. Again he crossed. That is for example white eye. White eye and miniature wing. Long wing. Long wing and that is red eye. Again, I am taking now eye color. Now, instead of just taking the body color, I am taking the wing size. So, the white eye and miniature wing. These two are the recessive characters. These two are the recessive characters. For long wing, I am taking capital M, red eye capital R for namesake. And in this one, just I am taking small L for just sorry. Small L for the miniature. Small L for miniature thing. And then just white I we have just a small R, small R. Like that. So long wing. So white I miniature wing. And just actually red I and long wing. Or in this manner, just like writing in a different manner. So on. Just uh, you can write this genotype in any way. So anyway, I'm taking the miniature wing and the long wing. And then white eye and red eye. So he made a cross. The F1 generation we receive, suppose this is the female and this is the male. The gene for the wing size also localized or located in the X chromosome. Now in the F1 generation, he received just a female, a long wing. Long wing and red eye. But it is a heterozygous individual. Cap L, small o. Cap L, small L. Cap R, small R. Then he obtained the male. So this is the female. He obtained the male. This is the opposite one. That is uh, what we have a miniature wing. Miniature wing and white eye. Miniature wing, white eye. So the miniature wing we have we know that one smaller and smaller point. So when this F1 individuals were self-fertilized, then we receive once again what we got the result, the previous one. But the results we have are actually the different results with the different percentage of recombinations. Now what were the individuals at? Now in F2, normally we have taken the parallel varieties. See that one mini HB mini HB and just white eye. Both are recessive. Mini HB white eye. And then we have long wing and red eye. Long wing, red eye. Then other two combinations are Miniature wing and red eye. Miniature wing and red eye. The next one long wing and white eye. Long wing and white eye. Now these two are the parallel combination what we started with the experiment. So these are the parallel combinations. And these two or non-parallel combinations. Now, what is the percentage of actually recombinant varieties? So here, he obtained parallel combinations of 62.8% of them are parallel varieties. Then the remaining 37.2% they form the recombinant varieties. So in the previous case, we see that one we receive only one point. 1.3 percent of recombinations and also just actually 98.7 the panel varieties. So the recombinant varieties are less in the previous case. But in this case we have received the panel combinations of 62.8 percent and the non parallel combinations of 37.2. The meaning for that one, though we receive some of the 62.8 percent of panel combinations. We have received recombinations a little bit higher, about one third, and this one is about or almost two third. So anyway, here the white eye, so the gene for eye color, 
and the team for what is called active learning science are somewhat loosely linked. The team for eye color, the team for wing size are loosely linked. So they are not showing at least enough strength of linkage. So when these genes are loosely linked, we have received more number or more percentage of recombination varieties. So such genes are loosely linked. That is why we have more percentage of recombination. So in the previous case, the genes are tightly linked. The strength of linkage is more. That is why the percentage of recombination is less. So in this case, the genes are loosely linked. So they show actually the strength of linkage is less. The strength of linkage is less. That is why we have increased percentage of recombinations. So there is a difference between these two. So in the first case, just actually the white eye color, sorry, the white eye color, and then what is called the yellow body color. Simply we can say the body color and eye color genes are tightly linked. They show just normally lesser frequency. In this case, the wing signs and eye color, the genes are present on the same chromosome, but they are not tightly linked, but they are loosely linked. That is why they show increased percentage of recombination. So this is what is happening for genes which are located in the same chromosome. So even the genes found on the same chromosome, they are not exhibiting the same percentage of recombinations. Some genes are tightly linked and some of the genes are loosely linked. That is why the percentage of recombination varies from one gene pair to another gene pair. Okay, now let's proceed further. Okay, so I made just the cross between what is called the yellow body white eye color. So you have to understand that one. He observed that the two genes did not separate. The two genes here nothing but the gene for body color and the gene for eye color. That is why we didn't get the ratio of 90 to 3 to 3 to 1. Instead, we have obtained different ratios. This is because of the tightness and looseness between the genes which are present in the same chromosomes. So, similar experiments are also conducted by Corens in the case of Lateris Cotaridis, showing the just what is called the flower color and also the size of the color grains. And based on that one, he made some other concept. So, let's uh, actually admit it now. We'll go to the next part. So I mentioned actually the genes. For example, the gene for the gene for eye color, the gene for wing size, the gene for body color. Let us assume the gene for eye color is an example of A. The gene for wing size is an example of B. The body color is an example of C. There are opposite alleles, for example, small a, small b, and then small c, as the case may be. So these genes are present on the X chromosome. And they are all inherited together because of their location on the same chromosome, they are to be inherited together. So the genes for these traits, what I represent the eye color, then wing size and body color, all located on the X chromosome. So when we have these two genes in a dilated cross, they are situated on the same chromosome, what will happen? They have the tendency to remain together, so that we have the percentage of parallel combination is more when compared to the non-parallel combinations. Either in the first cross, by taking the color of the body and eye color, or in the second cross, by taking the color of the eye and the size of the mean. So in the first case, we have received, we know that one sixty-seven point. 8%. So, in the first case, we have received. In the first case, we have received 98.7% of parallel combination. In the second case, we have received this actually 62.8%. 62.8%. So, in the first cross, we have received more parallel combinations because the genes are located in the same chromosome. The second cross 2, we have received more number of parallel combinations. This is because of the tendency of the genes. When they are present together on the same chromosome, they are integrated together. Thus decreasing the number of non parallel combinations. That is why we have a statement is like this. When the two genes in the diagonal cross were situated on the same chromosome, 
the proportional parallel gym combinations. So the parallel gym combinations were higher than the non-parallel type. So in the first case, the non-parallel type we are receiving only 1.3 percent. In the second case, we are receiving 37.2 percent. So anyway, you see that one will compare the parallel combinations. The non-parallel combinations are actually less because of the tendency of the genes located on the same chromosome. Now, what is the reason for that one? Why we have more number of parallel combinations when compared to the non-parallel combinations? When, when actually Morgan has proposed one concept for this one to explain this one. So, the reason why we are getting more parallel combinations than the non-parallel combinations because of one phenomenon, namely the physical association of genes. Otherwise called as a linkage. So this is a concept made by Morgan. So he just stated that our attribute. This is due to the physical association or linkage of the two genes. And coined the term linkage. So the linkage term was used by him. Why? To describe this physical association of genes on a chromosome. So because of the physical association of genes on a chromosome, they are all integrated together and that phenomenon he described linkage. That linkage is because of physical association of genes localized or located on the same chromosome. So the genes that are carried on the same chromosome will not assault independently. So I mentioned already according to the Mendelian principle, the genes are normally asserted independently based on the location. So when the genes are located on different chromosomes, then only we have the genes assorted independently according to the law of independent assortment. But when they are all presented together on the same chromosome, they did not assort independently. So they remain linked together and so such genes are called linked genes and the phenomenon is called linkage. Now, what is recombination? So we have seen the linkage. So linkage the tendency of genes to be linked together and to be inherited together. And use another term, the term recombination, to describe the generations of non-parallel genetic combinations. So we have received non-parallel combinations what represent the two crosses and where we have received non-parallel combinations and that term recombination refers to normally the generation having the non-parallel genetic combinations. Now, what do you mean by recombination of chromosome? And normally this is a process which produces the recombination of genes. How is it taking place? This is because of exchange of chromosomal materials. Suppose I am taking a pair of chromosome. Here I am taking this one. So this is what is called the recombination of the chromosome. The exchange of chromosomal materials between the non-sister chromatics of homologous chromosomes. This concept is called recombination of chromosomes, which results in the recombination of genes. Because of exchange of chromosomal materials between the non-sister chromatics of homologous chromosomes. So these two are actually homologous chromosomes, they are duplicated chromosomes. And normally this one sister. These two are called sister and these two are called sister. When I compare this from the paternal and maternal, and these two chromatics are called non sister chromatics. These non sister chromatics of homologous chromosomes occur normally within, during meiosis, during prophase 1, that too during packaging state. This phenomenon is also called as crossing over. So, normally we can calculate the frequency, the recombination frequency, based on the number of recombinants produced from the total number of individuals formed in F2. So the process which produces a recombination of this by interchange of corresponding segments. So this is an interchange of corresponding segments. When we non sister chromatics of homologous chromosomes and that process called recombination that resulted in genetic recombination. Now, so I mentioned all it takes place in the packaging stage of prophase 1 of the axis. Now, I mentioned already, even when the genes are located on the same chromosome, I mentioned for example ABC genes, some of the genes are tightly linked and some of the genes are loosely linked. Those genes which are tightly linked show less 
gene frequency, what is called less recombination frequency. So they showed very low recombination first in age. And while other genes which are normally loosely added, they exhibit higher percentage of recombination. I mentioned earlier that is already in the previous experiment. So the gene pairs that had very low percentage of recombination and these are all called tightly linked genes. So suppose when you have the genes, for example, I am taking the yellow gene, the gene for yellow body color, or the, I am taking this one, the gene for white eye, the gene for miniature gene. They are placed far away. And where is the gene for white eye color and yellow? And you see that now? See, this is gene for white eye color, this is the gene for miniature gene. And this is the gene for L. They are all localized in the same chromosome. But we see that one, the distance between there is a gene for eye color, white eye, and yellow body is least. So because these genes are tightly linked, that is why the chances of crossing over is less between W and Y. That is why we have received the least recombination frequency of 1.3%. But between the white and miniature body, we receive a frequency, a recombination frequency of 37.2. And this is the arrangement what we have. So those genes which have very low percentage of recombination are called tightly linked genes, these two. And those genes which have normally just higher percentage of recombination, that is W and then this N. You see the distance. And they are called loosely linked genes. So, between W and Y, the strength of linkage is higher and between W and M, the strength of linkage is normally less. So, higher the recombination frequency and less is the strength of linkage and lower the recombination frequency, higher will be the strength of linkage. So, here the genes for white eye and the yellow body were very tightly linked. I mentioned these two genes are tightly linked and showed only 1.3% I mentioned earlier recombination while the white eye and miniature thing showed 37.2% high frequency between the miniature thing and eye color so between the eye color and miniature thing 37.2% and between just match with the eye color and the body color the recombination frequency is 1.3 so then from these two values we can calculate just for example, what is the percentage recombination between, say an example of a miniature thing and yellow body. So we have just the percentage recombination between just actually miniature thing and white eye is 37.2. So a represent is just in the diagram. Now this is a gene for eye color, white eye, and this is a gene for miniature thing. So the percentage of recombination between these two is 37.2 because they are loosely linked. And between the white eye and the yellow body color, it is only 1.3%. So if these two values are given, we can calculate the percentage of recombination between the yellow body color and the nature body that is equal to 35.9%. So the total percentage 37.2 and from that point you have to subtract that is 1.3 percent. So the distance between the recombination frequency between Y and M is 35.9 percent. So in such cases if the problem arises in their giving you have to take the highest percentage recombination. From that point you have to subtract the lowest percentage then you will get the remaining percentage between the two linked genes. So this is what we call the percentage recombination. Now, how can you calculate actually the percentage recombination? It is also called recombination frequency or percentage recombination or crossover value. So, in this one, we have to count the total number of recombinants in F2 divided by the total number of offsprings produced in F2 multiplied by 100, then you can get recombination frequency or percentage recombination or crossover value. Now, a person by name Alfred Stativan and he used the frequency recombination as a measure of distance between the linked genes. Measure of distance between the linked genes and those genes located in the same chromosome. 
and map the location, map the position of the chromosome. Because the first person uses the frequency recombination as a measure of distance between the two linked genes on the chromosome and map the position on the chromosome. And this is called genetic map. So, what is genetic map? The diagrammatic representation of a arrangement and location of genes and the relative strength between the linked genes. And this is called what is known as a genetic map. In a genetic map, one map unit distance is equal to uh, one map unit distance is equal to one centimorgan or recombination frequency or percent recombination. So one map unit distance is equal to 0 0.01 recombination frequency. This is actually 0.01 or just in the form of 1% recombination. So we can have all one centimorgan. So one centimorgan is equal to one map unit distance. One centimorgan is equal to one map unit distance or percent recombination or frequency recombination of 0.01. See, a map unit is a recombination frequency of 0.01 or 1% recombination. So, it is the calculated dimension already by taking the total number of recombinants divided by, divided by the total number of individuals from the F2. So, it is also referred as 1 centimorgan. 1 centimorgan is equal to 1 map unit distance. For example, here the percent recombination between white eye and yellow body is 1.3 and person recombination between white eye and miniature body, sorry, miniature thing is 37.2, and between white and young is equal to 35.9. So, we are subtracting the lower, va lower value from the higher value. So, we will get the gene combination, the link is, and the location also. So, normally, this genetic map is used to localize or to just positionize a particular gene on the chromosome, and also you can construct a map. Now you see that one. So then the sequence of the arrangement of genes and chromosome is W, Y, M. So now the highest percentage between W and M, 37.2, and between W and Y, 1.3. Now the remaining is between Y and M. So this is a recombination frequency, the percent recombination between Y and M. So now you see that one. The genes W and Y I mentioned earlier, tightly linked genes. And the strength of linkage is more. I mentioned here strength is more, nothing but the strength of linkage is more. And similarly, you see that one W and M are loosely linked genes, and the strength of linkage is less. So when you have strength of linkage is less, ultimately we have just normally they are loosely linked genes, and the percent recombination is also higher. So what is the importance of genetic map? So nowadays it is being used, we know the known for sequencing the whole genome. It is a first step for sequencing the whole genome as normally done in the case of a human genome project. So this is the one what we have regarding the crossing over. So the crossing over value or person recombination or recombination frequency all being used for chromosomal mapping. Localizing the genes on the chromosome. That is why in genome sequencing we are using this one. Now let's pass on to the next concept, pedigree analysis. So one of the concepts actually used to analyze the sequence, analyze the nature of uh, the characters in human being, performing pedigree analysis. Now unlike the animals, here in the case of human beings, controlled processes cannot be made. We cannot make the individuals to get married, to get the character, what is happening in the next generation. But in the case of animals, it is possible. You can take two individuals of different characters and then you can make a cross. This is what is called non-random mating, preferential mating, non-random mating or preferential mating. So it is a controlled cross. But in human beings, it is not possible. That is why normally the genetics found a new method that is the study of family history. Taking one character about the inheritance of a particular trait, how far this character has been passed on to the generations one after another. And such a method, such an analysis, such an analysis of actual traits, we are just actually following the several generations of a family is called pedigree analysis. And similarly, we can see the scrutiny of already established matings. 
the script we have already established with meetings. To obtain information about the engraved text of a particular trait is called pedigree analysis. So in the pedigree analysis, what we are doing? The inheritance of a particular trait, the inheritance of a particular trait is represented in the form of what is called a family tree, a pedigree chart. Now in the case of pedigree chart, we are not using any words, but we are using simply the symbols. It is drawn up based on certain standardized symbols. So normally, actually Sir Francis Galton proposed the concept of eugenics to study about the human genome. And also we are talking about the inheritance of the traits, another aspect of uh, knowing the characteristics, how far the characters have been transmitted. And another method of actually inheritance of characters in the family, how to find out the family history and the family history can be done with the help of pedigree analysis. Now what are the symbols used? For normal male we are using the square and normal female we are using the skewer. And if the sex is unspecified, either male or female, or neither male nor female, and they are represented by this one parallelogram. Suppose the individuals, either the male or female, or the male are affected, then we have to get a shade. So the shade is quite shaded, just we see that one sphere and then this one. Now to represent the mating between male and female, a marriage. So we are taking one male, one female, then we are just connecting it by a single line. Some cases we have marriages between close relatives. So the marriage between close relatives is called normally consanguineous marriage. This marriage is called consanguineous marriage. So one of the methods to be avoided here, to just to the spread of the disease. To improve the quality of human race, we have one concept what is called eugenics as proposed by Sir Francis Bolton. And one of the methods of negative eugenics is to avoid marriages between close relatives. The reason for that one, if both the both male and female and both the parents are heterozygous, that is in a close relative marriage, when the recessive genes are brought together, they always lead to the development of some abnormal characters in the death of the individuals. Because the recessive arrays when brought together. They produce what's called lethality, the killing effect of the individual. The child will die even in the embryonic state. So that is to be avoided. Then this one represents a marriage and also the resultant obstacles. Parents above and children below. Suppose marriage occurs between two male and female individuals. Then we have to see one of the individuals affected. Say an example here it is represented as male. So normally such results happen, what I say, this is because of the carrier individuals. And most of the characters, for example, autosomal recessive characters, like uh, same example Down syndrome, actually, sorry, uh, we have for example, um, sickle cell anemia, then thalassemia, then albinism, SID, all these recessive characters we inherited because actually, the parents are carriers. Normally, we are using the word carriers for heterozygous parents. Those are having heterozygous condition or considered as carriers. Here, this is the result of the heterozygous individuals here. In both are heterozygous, then only we have the child, nearly 50% of the child affected, or we can say 25%. In the case of autosomal recessivity, in both are carriers, at least one of the child is affected. So, the chance will be 25% chance will be 25 percent. Now, so we have to analyze. Here is a representation showing how far the autosomal dominant character, how far the autosomal recessive character has been transmitted. How can you know that the present individual has the disease because of uh, the effect that had happened in the past, in the previous or the preceding generations, in the ancestors. Now here one dominant gene disorder, a gene located on autosome, and that one is a dominant gene. When present in dominant condition, produced a character, a disease. A one such one is autosomal dominant trait, the myotonic dystrophy, difficulty in walking. Myotonic dystrophy, difficulty in walking, the muscles become weak. This is because of the incoordination 
of the nervous and muscular system because of the absence of one protein to conduct the impulses from the surface of the muscle to reach the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, here the first one. So, this illustration shows an example for autosomal dominant. Now, here this is affected. Now, in the case of this affected female, let us assume the genes are dominant. So, the female is homozygous dominant. Now, in the F1 generation, we see that one, one male and one female is affected. This is possible only when marriage occurs between one individual, say here a homozygous female and another individual uh, normal male, though apparently male, this individual is heterozygous. So, only when one individual of the two parents is homozygous dominant, another parent is heterozygous dominant, then there is a possibility of the expression of the character in the next generation. You see that one, one male is affected, one, sorry, one male is affected, one female is affected. One female is affected. So this is resulted only when one of the parents is homozygous dominant and another parent is heterozygous dominant. Now, coming to the next one. So these two individuals are normal. That is why in the next generation, see that one, in the F2 generation, all these individuals resulted a marriage between this individual and this individual also becomes normal. Only when these two individuals are normal. Then what about this one? So once again this is affected female. She is getting married with a normal person. And again in the next generation, the after generation, one of the female is affected. Once again I am saying that it is possible only when this female is homozygous dominant, another one is heterozygous dominant. Then only we can have. So as there is a dominant character, if it is being expressed, we assume that one parent is homozygous dominant, another parent is heterozygous dominant, or both are homozygous dominant. Even if it is a polydactylic condition, the presence of one extra finger, it is also an example for autosomal dominant gene condition. There also we have. So, you have actually from this criteria, from this family tree, we can assume how far the character has been transmitted from our ancestors to the present generation. So, this is an example for autosomal dominant. Now, coming back to the autosomal process. Here we see that one these two parents are externally normal. But you see that one, this is one individual male, another individual male, and this is another individual female, and this is the fourth one, this is the fifth one. So, we have received five children. We have received five children in F1. So, out of these five children, you see that one, one male is affected, one female is affected. So, as per the recessive gene is concerned, or the some recessive gene disorder, as in the case of sickle cell anemia, if both the parents are carriers, and then both the parents are, for example, just say an example, in the case of sickle cell anemia, one normal hemoglobin, having the G, A, then the recessive G and taking this is normal hemoglobin, G, the recessive G and both are heterozygous. When both these individuals are heterozygous, they carry the genes for the character. That is why we see that one, this individual receives both the recessive genes. This individual receives both the recessive genes. That is why this person suffers from sickle cell anemia. This person also suffers from sickle cell anemia. And this female is looking like normal. But when marriage occurred between this female of F1 generation and another male, so what would happen? The F2 generation one of the male is affected. That indicated that this female and this male both are heterozygous. So if both are carriers like this, then only we will get the possibility of uh, that is the individual with the recessive character. So here they develop the sickle cell anemia. So as per the autosomal recessive gene is concerned. So it is being expressed when the recessive genes are present in homozygous condition that causes lethality or death. So in the case of sickle cell anemia, if both the parents are carrier, then there is a probability of individual affected in the next generation because the two recessive genes.
the sickle cell genes are brought together. And again in the second generation, one of the main affected in that just what is called the family chart, the family tree or pedigree chart that showed that these two individuals are also heterozygous. So remember that the recessive characters should be brought together only when both the parents or heterozygous are carried. But here we see that one, in the case of dominant autosomal dominant character, both the parents should be dominant or this one parent is homozygous is dominant another parent is heterozygous dominant then only the character will be expressed in the next generation and then if both are carriers then there is a possibility of obtaining the disorder in the case of children either in the F1 or F2 because of that what is called the recessive character or the genes brought together so these are all the explanations what I given what I represented so you just go through what is given that is in the form of illustration the same one what is given the second disorder the sickle cell anemia also so anyway this I would like to conclude so if you are welcome to ask any questions related to this chapter or the previous chapters we are ready to just give you the answer either through online or just in the form of chat thank you the course is completed now sorry the class is completed we will meet again once again the next time